Welcome to The Profile, I'm Gary Dunn. Tonight we have a pioneer of hardcore and he's got a funny story about V Capri. Mr Dave Harrison, welcome to the show. Hey Gary, thank you very much. How, How are you mate? Terrific, fantastic, yeah. Excellent, well we're taking a bit of a different tack here because we're starting to attack some of their later musicians from Perth like yourself. Right. You, know, you yeah. broke a lot of ground in the, in the metal yeah, we tried Industry. to, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll talk about that later, but yeah. where were you born? Canada. I was well, born in Canada, Vancouver, yeah. uh, in 1969, uh, yeah. British Columbia. Venice, uh, I basically, I was born in Amish territory, like Amish, yeah. you know, the Amish. Yes, the, I lived in Canada, I left Canada in 69. Really? Yeah, oh, 60, was, huh? 64 to 69. Oh, there. wow, amazing, yeah. Yeah, so, Ontario. Yeah, so. I was uh, adopted from there, so I've never ever met my birth mother. Wow. Yeah, and came to Australia a year later. So I've been there, so I've got dual citizenship. Yeah. That's unbelievable, didn't know that. Yeah, is yeah. it something you've tried to do, like just getting off track here, finding your birth mother or? No, not really. No? Uh, nothing. I'm, Never worried. To me, you. I'll try to live here in the now, be here in the now, and yeah. that's, that's it. I don't mm. really live in the past, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, born 69, Canada. Yeah. Um, when did you come to Australia? About a year later, yeah, so I've been here ever since. Okay, yeah. and what was the 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 crux or the turning point where you decided you were going to play music. Can you remember that time yeah, in your life? Yeah, I think um, probably teenage years. Yeah. So listening to all the music that was coming out at the time and that, and I was hanging out with some uh, guys at school who were playing drums and mm. guitar and musical instruments and all those kind of things. So everyone was always like, oh, we need a bass player, we need a bass player. And I just, I just loved being around the music and yeah. that whole thing about being creative and just the whole vibe of music yeah. was great, you know, so... I was never really into the team sport kind of thing yeah. or anything like that. So that was kind of my... Didn't play my, the footy and the cricket? No, really, that mm. was, wasn't really my tribe, you know. So mm. it was like, yeah, and it just became... So the, the day I was old enough to do a gig, mm. 18 in Perth, that was the was first day I did a gig. Yeah. So it was pretty much what happened, you know. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And um, so what would you, your biggest influences have been well, obviously, in those years? Well, obviously, the, the most music that I sort of made the impact on me being a teenager, that those years would have been in the 80s. Mm. So the 80s was the hard rock 80s, you know, the mm. airband 80s and all that kind of stuff. So grew up on all the rock and metal of the 80s um, and went from there. So that was mm. pretty much what we listened to. Yeah. The first band that ever, the live band that ever came to our high school at the time was V Capri. Wow. Yeah. Is that the but story you have about V Capri? V Capri, yeah. You can can, you, can because, you tell us that because, story? Because we were, a, Look, we were the high school headbangers. We were listening to stuff like Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath. So we listened to V Capri. That's for the chicks. Yeah, so we're look. not going to listen to this band. Yeah. So, yeah. so the teacher goes, "You don't want to go to the gig. You guys can hang out uh, and sit outside of the the gym." And well, it's like, like a detention or punishment because you didn't. Because we didn't want to go because it was V Capri. We're not, that's that's for that's for chicks. Yes. That music's for chicks. Yeah. We're in a metal. We don't want to listen to yes. Metallica. <laughs> we're not Ozzy Osbourne and yeah. solos and ripping, shredding solos and drummers, and we don't want this. You know, it's not us. Because the, not, the Vega Pre wouldn't have had double bass drum pedals and yeah, all that sort of stuff, yeah, would they? No, it was no. like, you know, sell out mm. commercial stuff. Yes. So that was like, yes. at the time, you know, what you're like, you, <laughs> you get very precious about stuff like that. It's pretty ridiculous. Well, I've heard, but, yeah, lots but, of stories. But that's what happens. But, so I did see Duke Vega Pre. So we basically saw Vega Pre looking through the, the gymnasium, cracking the door. So yeah. we're looking through and all we see was heaps of girls up the front going, crazy. It was nuts, yeah. But these guys were great because they did their PA. They came in, did their show basically get all the high schools about two or three years mm. before they're ready to go to the pubs. Yeah. So the time they, they, they got to the pubs, it was mm. like ready-built fan base. Did, you know? did Todd bring genius his own... Genius guy. That guy must be a marketing genius. Did Todd bring his own PA in then? Or, yeah. or still? Uh, or not? Like no, he does he was, know that. He for, for those of you who watched the show quite a few times, the producer normally sits over there. He's now uh, over this side. Yeah. Uh, He's waiting for the pizza of delivery. Course, he didn't bring any food tonight. Of course, V Capri were awesome. But uh, what they did with the with the the pub scene, I think they packed what was it, two and a half thousand people, payers into a, a mm. venue. That fifty dollar note he gave you is just yeah, hanging yeah. out your top pocket <laughs> yeah, there a bit. Yeah. So but you know, when you're a kid, that. that's the music that we grew up with. That's yes. the music at the time. It was like yeah. you're into that or you're yeah. into this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. and that was kind of how it is when you're like fourteen mm. or fifteen at the time. So so set the scene. Started. You. You've seen V Capri at school yeah. and just gone, <laughs> yeah, was, I know I'm into this, if I can mix a bit of that in yeah, because they yeah, were yeah. obviously yeah. very influential on you. Yeah, yeah. And um, you, out comes a band called Infrared in 1989. That was... Yeah, that cool. was pretty much um, a, a basic cover band. It was a hard rock cover band. Yeah. We do like the ACDC and yeah. all the kind of classic sort of rock yeah. stuff and that. Um, and that was our band that was already gigging. 
And I, I'd been playing for about bass for, I don't know, whoever it was, well, not that long really, mm. but there was a spot that come up to be a bass player. So I thought, that's just jumped jump straight in. So yep. the first gig there was a, I think it was a Karen Up Tavern. Yep. Something like that. So that was kind of the, the beginning of that. And, and that was the days of the, the, the tail end of the, the cover band scene. So the cover yep. band scene where bands would be doing, you know, you could do four, five gigs, shows a, a week, have yeah. a crew and a PA and yeah. a light show and everything else. It was else. just starting to drop off then, wasn't it? Yeah, well, that was it was still thriving. Mm. But it was like if you were in a, like an original band at the time, it was hard to get your foot in because all the venues exactly were booking, right. booking cover bands, you know. So that's where I, I sort of come in, yeah. you know, where well, we come in at yeah. the time. So Inquisition, so was, was that your first hardcore yeah, so punk while metal? Yeah, so while I was playing in uh, infrared, mm. we were doing covers and stuff. That yeah. was, That's kind of how I learned to play, I guess, because yeah. you're doing... Uh, you know, we were doing four or five gigs a week yep. for f years straight. And that's kind of how we learned all the songs. But on the side, I wanted to do something that was um, more original, do it some yes. original stuff, you know yes. what I mean? So we started this band. as like a sort of hardcore punk crossover thrash kind of thing. And oh. uh, The caterers are here. The caterers, eh? We have yeah, pizza. pizza. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. Pizza for you? I find it hard interviewing you while I've got a mouthful of pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope you don't yeah. mind. No, that's fine. So that's what happened anyway. So I did that on the side. We were doing some gigs. But they were, uh, the venues back then for original bands was places like in the city. You had the, the um, Old Melbourne. Yes. Shenton Park. Yes. Thank you, mate. Yeah, oh, I got a lemon. Go suck <laughs> on a lemon. Hey, yeah, awesome. Thanks, Al. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that was those, those were the venues, Shenton Park, mm. um, and then the first original gig that I did as an origi in an original band uh, was uh, at the in Stone Crow in Fremantle. Yeah. Tiny little yep. hole in the wall place. Supporting in, in one of the first that. ever sort of metal, Rich. original metal bands in Perth. I think the first ever original metal bands in Perth or hard rock bands back then from the 80s would have been Trilogy and Saracen. They had vinyl out. Yeah. But as far as the thrash goes, there was a band around called Cremator at the yep. time and they put an EP out. Home style surgery, and that was recorded. You know, who was in that by band? Rob Grant. Well, the drummer for that band was Russell. Russell, who went on to play with uh, UMI. Oh, Russell Hopkins, yeah. pivotal. That's my name, moment too. Yeah, UMI were more of a sort of more of a pop, yeah, pop band, yeah. I guess. But he was a diehard sort of speed mm. metal thrash mm. I've ever seen him with yeah. all his patches and everything else at the Dada Records and all the record stores at the time. So played with that band, but we couldn't replay really that well back then. We were just learning, you know, that's how yes. we did it. But it kind of opened a, a sort of a crack in the door for us to do yeah. uh, an original band. Like yeah. you could play original. Cause people, most of people booking bands back then were like, oh, you can't do a set of originals. No one's going to see it. They, you know, you're going to do three sets of covers and all that kind of mm. stuff. So. so you had people throwing that in your face all the all time. All the time, yeah. And and yeah. then you formed a band called your Allegiance. Yeah, well, and, in and infrared you supported has, Infrared. That's right, like. yeah. But you were the same guy. Yeah, no, so yeah. what happened is... Uh, that was a cover band, your typical cover band back mm. in the late 80s, early 90s. So what happened there was uh, I actually got Conrad in. He was, Conrad, the singer, vocalist for Allegiance, mm. he was actually the drummer for Infrared. He was playing drums, so I got him in. But the thing was, because we couldn't get any gigs, we wanted to do some original stuff in, in a heavier vein. Because mm. I think uh, metal was, obviously in the 80s, you had all the headband, all the commercial stuff yeah. that was really popular that would sell millions yeah. albums and that was everywhere but you, the heavier stuff you know the Metallica Megadeth Slayers and all that kind of stuff were all were just more underground mm. it was just about to break big you know like but we were doing our own stuff in a sort of a more of a thrash heavy metal vein but we showed pictures of the pictures of the um, the band and they like, we're not going to book that it's too scary I don't want to book that you're going to scare everyone off and all that stuff so we basically uh, had to force our way in so the way we forced That's our way lemon. in yeah yeah we had to force our way in so the way we're doing that was, okay, we'll, we'll do an hour's Sunday session and at the Karen Up. Instead of doing three sets, we'll do two sets. And make the first one, we'll get, this, get our original band in to do a, do a set. So we just gave them our heaps of free passes. So when we did that, it was going ballistic, you know. So we did that. That's how we sort of did it. Mm. We just sort of grew it from there because no one else is going to And it grew else. massive. Allegiance, I remember seeing you. So to grow, yeah, yeah. the Balgarin or somewhere. Sundowner, yeah. Those Sundowner, you could, sorry. You know, those big beer bars where you could get... It was like the Generator and the Sundowner yep. and the um, the Warwick Hotel yep. and the, the, these are the, the days of the the beer barns where you could get like yeah a thousand, oh no, I just saw all these people you know, people like, just going nuts when you oh yeah the Berlin had long hair and, and yeah, you'd be right. you know yeah well we, we sort of built it up for the obviously before the internet and all that the only way we could get it out 
was we used to fly every gig. So we used to, mm. to make flyers, yeah. take out ads in the thing. I used to take out ads with Alan Simpson because yeah. he was uh, the guy that was taking book in the ad space. Was he? Express Magazine. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So he was the marketing man of the, the guy. He wanted a full page or a half page at a good price. So you had to be to nice to Al to get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, because you, get, you get, the, get the nice late deal going in, you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so do all that. So, yeah, we'd be doing flyers. And then we do, we, do, we did up demo tapes because obviously we weren't ready to do a full album. We had enough songs to yeah. do it because studio time was so expensive back then. So, yes. So we used to go and the first um, demo we did, like the pledge we recorded on a, um, a VHS machine. Yes. I think that was like the way you recorded. <laughs> that was the master tape. Yeah. So we did, and then we took them to Mark at ProCopy to make Mark the at ProCopy? You give yeah. him ProCopy a plug? Yeah, yeah. So he was he used to do tapes. So we used to flog these tapes. We used to put them, go around and put them on all the record stores and, and sell these tapes. So that's how we're going to get people familiar with our tunes because the, yeah. radio, the radio ain't going to play it. So, it so would you out. say, Mark, that ProCopy was instrumental? I'm mean, yeah, not only your tapes. band, but... Because you couldn't upload Many, it to YouTube back then. So yeah. it was like... We get, had to, yeah. Getting out there. We used to get cassettes. We used to dub them off. And yeah. we, we, you He's know, choking on his pizza. We'd get 300 copies and then we'd come back and get another 500 copies. And mm. I think one of our demos, we, we ended up doing like 200, two, two and a half thousand copies of, of a tape. You know, mm. like the second one. Yeah, yeah. So that was hilarious. He was trying to talk, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Yeah. The tapes. But we, yeah. not only with the tapes, we'd, we'd, we'd sell them. We'd actually send them out to magazines and fanzines across the world because there's this big underground yep. network and that was how you get it out because the radio wouldn't play it. Yep. So it, that was kind of how the grassroots thing grew, you know. So moving from Allegiance, yeah. you obviously aspired to be like Alan, one Alan Simpson. And, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. You, then you actually worked <laughs> at Express Magazine. Yeah, well, well the... the, yeah. the, the, well, the well, the career it's, un it's, un it's yeah. unbelievable. Well, the career it's trajectory was already right. The realize. model was already there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so yes. it was like. <laughs> so you, you copied. <laughs> way. Yeah. If, if you like. You followed and copied. And you find a model of success and, yes. you, and, you, <laughs> and yeah. you move on. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. That, yeah, but that's kind of what happened. Yeah. Have you ever been in a team with Alan? No. Because. <laughs> no. well, I'm, I'm, I'm in his team. And yeah, yeah. It's a great team. Yeah. I'll as long as I do what yeah. he says. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Um, so Express Magazine, Black Steel, uh, yeah, Jamie yeah. Page. Yeah. Um, well, before that, with, with, with the, with, with the Allegiance, Allegiance thing, well, just, cause that's, we basically had cassettes and we started to release full-length albums. We yep. started booking our own gigs and stuff like that. And when we started pulling people in, the, um, the pub bookers were like, well, yeah, we'll have some of this. Mm, and I think course. that was happening. Was a, and then there was a whole bunch of other bands that we say so we would do our own set, like, a, like you'd go see a concert, and then yeah. we'd book some other bands to be opening bands and yeah, that's right. kind of how it happened yeah you used I think to go on last like uh, well that was spawn a scene and then there was a whole bunch of other bands mm. coming out that were and there was so many so it was great because you gave them a bit of of air time if yeah, well, you like well that's how how scenes grow and, yes. and that's kind of how it was work, that's how it was working in america and yeah, europe and everything yeah. else and you know you'd have a, a gig with you know three or four bands like that yeah and then they'd all bring their friends and you'd have a huge night but the only time and, you know, 10 years before that, when we used to have the Nook and Buster and yeah, the, the yeah. Herdy Monday and the Charles and all that, yeah. that's the only time we would have six or seven bands. Yeah. You guys started to do it. Original bands. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and one, one night, bang, 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 bang. Yeah. And then, yeah. The, and then the bands there could all sell their tapes and their yes. merch and everything else yeah. and get their own fan, build their yeah. own fan base. Yeah. And then we put the album out. We had, we had a band competition. I think it was a Yamaha Rock yeah. 92. <laughs> we won that, didn't they? So they, they sent us over east. So that was our first experience mm. over there. And so, yeah. so that you, you, that inspired you to start the merchant um, yeah, well, company. That was through all, that I was, believe you got yeah. twenty thousand. Yeah, well, that, that's based. There was a that was a forward on with marketing and merchandise and yes. everything else. That it was a, just a logical progression, really, because mm. with, with the internet hitting and that too. But that's down mm. later. But I guess at the end, with the Allegi the end of the Allegiant story is with our first album we come came out, we built such a grassroots following that it actually went number one on the chart. Yeah. <laughs> charts. Mm. It was unbelievable. Like, and it, no radio would play it. So mm. it was like, it was kind of really funny. You know? I remember <laughs> so, when yeah. I was working with CMI, Musical Wholesaler, we were yeah, selling right. ESP and, right, yeah. and Jamie Page came to me and, yeah. and you know, Dave Harrison, yeah. I obviously came to see yeah. you and stuff like that. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> so we ended up endorsing yeah. you um, yeah. for yeah. a bass guitar. And, yeah. and for those of you who didn't know what instrument uh, Dave plays because that's up on the screen there, oh, Mark. Oh, yeah, what yeah. instrument do you play? But he did, you did mention it bass. earlier on. But bass Mark, mainly in band. Mark wasn't yeah, listening. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. You know, I try. That's cool. Strawny's having a laugh. Try the but, best. <laughs> you know, the simple fact is Mark yeah. wasn't listening. 
Yeah. Now he's put it on the screen. He wants me to say something about it. But <laughs> totally pro- totally so you're a bass player. Any other instruments? Or I, I dabble with the guitar a bit. It's yep. more for a bit of a hobby of that yep. stuff. But yeah, the yep. home studio thing I really enjoy and upload a few video YouTube videos here and there. But it's yep. all funny. I, like I, I saw one uh, where you're did teaching you? bass. Yeah, you yeah, did yeah, a, right. a, a, a excellent. It was actually. Oh, thanks. Yeah, and yeah. it sounded it was something about the metal sound on a. Uh, on I think a yeah, I try to do all different styles, but yeah. YouTube's that's a whole other story, I guess. Yeah. But YouTube's a great medium now to exactly to right. do all that. It's, it's found a place now yeah. to, for that, yeah. you know, yeah. which is excellent. great. Yeah. So, you travel a lot these days. I hear. I try sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I run my business. Where do you go? Where, what do you do? What, well, I like to go to like places like Europe and yeah. places. We just travel around and just see the world a bit. It's good to do that. Do you, you know? carry a bag of Allegiance CDs? Oh or no, no, or, no, no, no. Well, I do because my business, heavy metal, it's heavy metal merchant. Yeah. Dot com. I have a lot of companies that I work with for distribution. Yeah. Uh, overseas and stuff. So it's good to you know like make the connections there and stuff like that. Excellent. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's what a bit of a. It's great. I think it's good for people to do that. It changes it. Your perspective mm. of the world and learn about things and other people's cultures. Mm. What you think is normal to you is what could be totally foreign to, to yeah, someone else sure. on the other side of the world. You know, so yeah. it's good. But I remember when I did come and see Allegiance and um, being a musician myself, yeah, yeah, but also owned a gym oh, yeah, yeah. in those days. And I remember a little scrawny Harrison yeah, coming yeah, that's in. Right, yeah, Not yeah. anymore, that's obviously. That, but yeah, uh, I'll try to try to stay fit you know so you're on a bit of a health kick and and you've continued that on 20 years your life and well i don't know i guess what i think these days they call it um straight edge straight edge, straight edge yes. in the hardcore punk scene yeah. i guess i was straight edge before there was straight yeah. edge but i don't yes, know right. so i never really been into that side of things mm. that so much because mm. yeah i was I want, to, I want to die young at an old age you know like because i'll try to look after myself feel good and um you know don't take health for granted i've seen a lot of people i've played in bands with now that are not here, or they've had yes. major health problems and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's don't, don't squander your health, you know. Yep. So, what other jobs have you had through your, your life? Well, yeah, we're playing in bands. Like when, we, when we started touring and stuff, especially doing uh, touring Australia and doing you know the national tours and stuff like that. Um, in between tours, we just kind of take what jobs you could, you know. So I was, I was doing everything from sweeping floors to telling marketing and stuff, but. Doing the hard yards. Pushing trolleys. I used to do this in the early days. But the, the main jobs I've had, I've uh, worked at the uh, Express magazine yep. for quite some time. And then I actually went and managed a gym for a while, you know, for okay. years, which was fun. Yeah. And then the last sort of eight years or so, I've been on the online heavymetalmerchant.com, which has yep. turned into a really good thing. Is that where you're Internet. making your living from mostly been these full-time days? full-time now for about eight years. Excellent. Yeah, full-time staff yep. and all that. So Excellent. Yeah, it's all good, yeah. So, you know, the internet's coming. It's a great opportunity to, doesn't matter where you are in the world now, you know. So Do you have an office in Perth, for instance? Yeah, no, or? we just keep it really, really tight. You know, yeah. Small's the new big, you know, so we keep it tight. Small's the new big. With global reach, you know, so that's what 60 we 60's the new 40? That's right. Well, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. No, 60's the new 40. Oh, know, 40. lucky for Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, look, um, yeah, yeah. we have this guitar. Yeah. And we get all our guests to sign it because um, yeah. we're going to um, auction it off at Telethon and we, we're hoping that you Fantastic, would sign yeah. it as well. There's a lot of names here. Yeah, man. Um, a lot, obviously, before your era, yeah. if you like. And um, if you could, I've got a white pen here if you want to sign yeah. the side here because my producer's saying, you know, we've got yeah, too many yeah. names too on the front. the front. I don't yeah. know whether that was that or he didn't want you on the front. I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> Probably not. You know, because he's got a Whatever method in his w- madness for everything. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Eating pizza on set. You're Wonderful. welcome. Um, I'll just put the top on that because it'll dry out. Yeah. It's the last thing we want. So, who's your favourite uh, band of all time? It's pretty hard, really, because obviously, like, say with you, probably, there's probably so much music, you know, to listen to, but mm. if I had to nail down a few, it'd probably be like Black Sabbath. Uh, early Black Sabbath, yep. uh, Rush, mm. and probably just for the longevity and the you know evolution of bands like that. Um, and the other one would probably be Judas Priest, something yep. like that. Which were bands like that we were lucky to play with later on. So okay. a lot of these bands we were listening to grow up with. Yeah, you then up playing yeah. with and stuff and touring with, which was great. Like yeah, a dream come true. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, rock and roll dream, mate. You know? Yeah, it's <laughs> like if you're a footballer, you want to play at the MCG on Grand Final. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I remember nice. the first gig I ever went to was. Uh, I think it was ACDC and Rose Tattoo at the Perth Entertainment Centre. You mm. used to think, oh, it'd be great to play here. Mm. And you play there, it's really cool, you know. So, yeah, it's As great. you probably have too. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Supported ACDC yeah, yeah. as well. And there you all go. That sort of yeah. stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Angus is such a nice guy. Yeah, fantastic. Ring the bell, mate. 
Um, yeah. Okay, um, what instrument do you play? <laughs> what? Oh, this? Ring the bell. Oh, the right? bell. Oh, the nameometer. Yeah. I'm getting away from myself here. Are you all right there, Strawny, eating your pizza? <laughs> Juice is over there on his phone. <laughs> You're eating mine. <laughs> yeah. See? Johnny Young. Johnny what? Young. <laughs> what? He's on the phone, Johnny Young. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, uh, okay, if you were um, stranded on a deserted island, yeah. uh, or you, you knew you were going to be then you could only take one album with you, yeah. what album would that be? Uh, I think I'd just take my hard drive, man. You take your hard drive? <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. on, the, well, what's on one, your hard drive? Well, pretty much, one of my hobbies is collecting music, and I have done for a long time. Yep. So, But I'm, I'm very much a minimalist, so I don't like to have a lot of accumulate a lot of material mm. stuff. You're not a hoarder? Me down. No, I try not to be. Yeah. I used to be a big vinyl, but I'm not. everything's on a hard drive now. And everything I pretty much listened to or was influenced by, I have. In this collection yes. about one and a half terabytes. So yeah. I think I just, the size of a mm. CD, I'll probably take yeah. that. Could you but if I had to take one, I'd probably maybe take the complete, complete works of Bach or something okay. like that. Could <laughs> you imagine if we had just a little hard drive terabyte sitting here and this was all gone, we'd have no backing, would we? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this, would, this wouldn't even be a terabyte. Would oh, it? look, this, I don't know, 30,000, 60,000, uh, I don't know, uh, 20, 20,000? That was close. Pub Legends. Yeah. Pub awesome. Legends. Um, yeah. What was that? Uh, they the CD? ones that you take? Uh, yeah, Volume 1 and Volume yeah. 2 available at ProCopy. So they, they would be your Desert Island one? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't take the Pub oh, Legends right. in Desert right. Island. <laughs> Not a chance. What, I have to listen to Simo drumming and <laughs> oh, right. bloody. Geez, that would yeah. drive me nuts. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I have nightmares about it now. <laughs> But um, <laughs> no, no, I'm asking the questions as well. That's Thanks, right, Dave. Right. Thanks. Look, um, <laughs> so what was your favourite TV show growing up? Oh, I used to like watching Countdown. Countdown. Back in the days, yeah. This is uh, when it was popular in the 70s and 80s, 80s, mm. 80s. Does a, does a Countdown thing just come on? I saw Pete Borg the other day put oh, something right. on about a group. Um, I, I, watched, I used to watch it sorry? every... Humdrum. humdrum yeah, they called. used to have the Humdrum. I used to watch it yeah. every, every Sunday. Well, it's on Countdown. Facebook now. It, Someone don't like me. So it's all now on Facebook now, mm. the band. Mm. Yeah, so I used to watch that. You used to see the top ten and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So yeah. it's kind of cool, yeah. You find out mm. what, because you can find out what bands were getting released and mm. playing. and Yeah. Yeah, not like these days. It's yeah. everything's on YouTube. But. Exactly right. So there's no, you know, there's no set thing where you yeah. go Sunday night at but 6 o'clock. But, and but it kind of got it kind of got a bit teeny bopper. They used to have things like ACDC on there. And, and then it got teeny bopper. Really 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 cool. And then it kind of got really teeny bopper and bubblegum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, So it kind of, as it got older, kind of grew out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then it stopped. So. Yeah. Uh, Vika Pre were on it bit oh, well, as well. Though. I would have seen that. Got on there. Sure. and There's a few Perth bands. Um, yeah. The Boys, obviously. Something called Supernaut, was it? Is yeah, Supernaut. Supernaut. I like it both ways. Was it? Was yeah. that them? Supernaut. Yeah. yeah. I remember them. And it was true, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But there was other bands before that, like Buffalo and all this stuff they used to like. Exactly. It was good, yeah. Aussie, yeah. Aussie yeah. sort of rock yeah. stuff I liked, yeah. yeah. The Harder Edge stuff. That yes. Influenced bands like Guns N' Roses and all that stuff later, you know. So what does the future hold for you? I just think you keep on, I'm trying to not, these days I'm trying to be less planned on what I'm doing and stuff. I like mm. to be more living in the moment. present now, yeah, yeah. which is good. And um, just keep growing my business and all that kind of stuff mm. and music. And I like doing the stuff on YouTube, stuff mm. like that. I think it's really good. So yeah. different opportunities open up. It's all yeah. good. Yeah, stay healthy and just enjoy, enjoy life. So yeah. you're just waiting for the next opportunity and uh, oh, I open thought, to I, think, I, thought, open I never to after you waited for opportunities. I always trying to make them happen for yeah. myself. But yeah, just keep mm. something's working. I just like yeah. keep doing more of it. You know? Do you have any unfulfilled ambitions? Um, something that you well, I used to have a bucket to... list, but then I just now I don't worry about it. Yeah. I just I, I, I just. It keeps you from being in here and experiencing life. Mm. Why are you trying to tick off all these things on the list? Life's mm. just passing you by. And I think missing... bu buckets sort of came in about your area. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Bucket lists. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> do you collect anything, Dave? I used to collect stuff, but I don't, not anymore. I'm just trying to not be so attached. You to like it at all on a terabyte? Or yeah, yeah. I, I like to be more free and less have clutter around. And Would you class yourself as OCD or...? Mm, in, in not, any way, maybe some some things, yeah, mm. I guess. But everything has to be in line. Everything no, has to not be in that order. bad. No, oh, I just yeah. I, I think it's I, I, trying to hoard stuff. To me, is in some way OCD because you still got all these all this emotional attachment to stuff. It just it's like emotional yeah. baggage. So to me, it's, I just want to let myself go of all that, not hoard, yeah. ac accumulate material stuff. You, know? yeah. you can't take it with you, and I don't want to leave it as a burden for someone else. You know, mm. what I mean? so 
I think it's good. There's a whole movement now as well, like essentialism or minimalism. Yes. But to me, it's not so much about that. It's just having the my, it's maximization of the stuff that I have already. Yeah. So if I have something in my life, I want to make sure it's what I want and maximize that rather than trying to just keep hoarding more stuff. Excellent. So rather than bring something else, something new in, I want to make space for it, give it to someone else. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I find it just a bit, it's a bit more of a freeing thing, feeling more at peace, mm. you know. Thank, oh, thanks for sharing that yeah, with us. No, that's interesting. Yeah, very, yeah. Very like, interesting. You look it up, there's plenty of movies out there now and there's stuff on that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. letting go of stuff and that. I don't have time to watch movies, but... Yeah, yeah. So, is, um, <laughs> what, would you, what would you put on your gravestone, Dave? Uh, uh, lived a long, full life. Yep. And life's not forever, but love is. Wow. There you go. Wow. Pro yeah. Very profound. Oh, thanks. <laughs> And uh, is there anybody you would recommend, you think would you would like to come on the show that you would, would want to see? Um, There's quite a few guys from, from the, so out of, depending what area you're looking well, at. From, but from, well, from obviously from era. yours. And, but I would and, say there's guys like um, Joe, Joe Capitaine, who is, uh, yeah. he, he did a lot of stuff with, um, he do a lot of our flyers and album covers, yeah. you know, album cassette covers, yeah. and did a lot of artwork and was involved with a lot of bands like that. And he played in a few bands like Infected and stuff like that. So Infected, that can you can you give us his number? Or give my producer's number. Yeah, Joe Capitano. Yeah, Another yeah. one would probably be interesting would be the guy like Squasher. Squasher, definitely. Yeah, he's an early uh, manager yeah. of the. Yeah, some I of the know early Squasher. Bands. Yeah. yeah, and he's got a bit of a story to tell because he was the guy who originally started doing the Big Day Out. Yes, and stuff. You know? Exactly he's, right. We like one of the first bands ever to play on. Yes, know, thanks to the, that guy Squasher. You know, yeah, so yeah. He pioneered a lot of that stuff. Mm. Yeah, I so. believe he's doing something in Claremont now. Um, oh right. Yeah, probably uh, is. I'm not sure. It's something one. I think he's had a big thing happening with it. Gate one. A big yeah. thing happened in his life, you know, with health and whatever, and I think he's come out the other side, so whatever. Cool. So he's got a bit of a story to tell, but he'd, he'd know a lot about the bands because he, he used to bring a lot of the tours and stuff over as yeah. well, so, and which started that whole... Yeah. And that's another thing. As, as the tours were coming... That out, was Bassanine over, wasn't it? When yeah, it yeah. But then he'd, he'd bring a lot of these international tours to Perth yes. and other Australia and stuff, so he'd give... Bands like us opportunities to play with these international bands and tour with them. Yes, you know, which opened up another whole other era. I Fantastic. Guess, as well, yeah. You know. So well, he's, that's another guy I put on the list. I'd say. Yep. Thank you very much for that. Look, is there something we don't know about you, Dave, that you would like uh, to share it with us? Um, well, probably not. I think I've told you everything. Most of the stuff. Yeah. yeah. The, the limited time we have, but it's all good. Well, your diet. Yeah. What, can you tell me about what you eat these days? I just pretty much try to keep sim things simple. Like I just try to eat whole food that's that minimise. Yeah, 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 this stuff, that I call it HI, so human interference. So the less human interference you have, then the, the better it is for you, you know. I actually went and studied, that's probably something, that my, but I went and studied nutrition at, externally right. at Cornell University. So, so we get it out of you in the end, extract it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that, I guess that's something people don't know about. So that, that's an interesting bit of a passion of mine as well. Because, mm. you know, I see a lot of people neglect their health and have all these problems and you yeah. realise how much disease and everything else is caused by what we put, you know, you are what you eat, drink and think, so... It all has an impact, so mm. it was a fascinating thing to study, you know. So, yeah. yeah, so since then I've been eating pretty much a whole food, what you call a whole food, plant-based diet, you know. So yeah. I think it's good for us, good for the planet, good mm. for the environment. So if the, is there someone out there, our viewers, who want to to learn a bit more about that? Yeah, You'd yeah. be happy to Well, there's to plenty help of them. resources these days, yeah. you know, especially with the net. I mean, now it's such a growing thing. Mm. It's all these movements now of health and nutrition and well-being and all that stuff. So Shop at Aldi. Yeah, 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 healthy. Yeah, yeah well, I think it, at the end of the day, the, the, the first step is, is to, in the supermarket is to go on the outer edge, you know, not the you know all, the, all mm. the packaged foods that went there 30, 40 years ago. Yes. Just the whole food process, produce, mm. you know, mm. simple, keep it simple, and then and don't look for magic pills, you know. So yeah, yeah. Well, Dave, Dave Harrison, thank Thanks you so much, much for coming yeah. and chatting to us. Awesome, it's, yeah, um, appreciate it, man. Yeah, one. I'm no, glad, look, glad you're interested. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's all for tonight, thank you. There's no way, man, there's too much to go yet. This one's all about schizos, it's definitely for you here.